To say I love you, one must first know how to say I. Welcome back. My name is Lori Maids and I'm an optimized practitioner and professional coach. And this is my optimized weekly vlog where I share with you a couple of my favorite big ideas from the optimized coach and uh, mastery series program with Brian Johnson. We're currently on week 18 in the program, 18 weeks deep, uh, working our way through module four right now, which is uh, Carpe Diem. There's six parts to Carpe Diem. And right now we're on part six, which is all about love, how to cultivate more love in our day to day process. As always, there's a bunch of really, really cool ideas in the program. I'm going to share with you a couple of them. If you like the ideas I'm sharing, I definitely recommend you join the Optimize program. You can gain access to that through www.optimize.me. Um, go check it out. The first big idea is you will never be exonerated. And that actually rocks you know uh, for the past couple of weeks we've been working on developing our skills our mindsets and strategies on how to become master builders of building masterpiece days and the fact of the matter is is that we were never going to arrive we're never going to get to a place where we're perfect at building masterpiece days it's it's very it's going to be very very rare that we will ever experience a perfect day and so the idea that we will never be exonerated is something that we really need to get, like viscerally get in our bones, in our cells, that we will never be exonerated. There's no goal to get to. And so we want to get good at falling in love with the process. We want to get good at following, falling in love with the practice. We want to get good at falling in love with the plateau, knowing that with the plateau, that if we stick to it and we keep putting in effort, we will eventually break through that plateau. And so we can actually get excited and fall in love with being on the plateau because we know with consistent effort, we're going to bust through it at some point. And we want to create our masterpiece processes in building a masterpiece day. We want to create it and, and cultivate it that has an essence of love behind it, right? So we can actually stay the path masters master builders of their craft of their skill whatever it is that they're working on the difference between them and amateurs is that masters stay the course they stay on the path they keep putting in the effort and the way they do that is they fall in love with the process they fall in love with the plateau they fall in love with the practice of it all one of my favorite lines comes from a book by george leonard and the the book is called Mastery. And I'm just gonna read the quote for you right now because it's that good. So here's what George says in his book, Mastery. He said, a practice can be anything you practice on a regular basis for an integral part of your life, not in order to gain something else, but for its own sake, we practice it. For a master, the rewards gained along the way are fine, but they're not the main reason for the journey itself. Ultimately, the master and the master's path are one. And if the traveler is fortunate, that is, if the path is complex and profound enough, the destination is two miles farther away for every mile he or she travels. Isn't that awesome? To be so in love with each of your days, with the process you go through every single day, with the practice of building masterpiece days, to be so in love with the plateau, that you hope that you never really have perfect days because that would be kind of a letdown. Like you love it so much, you are absolutely just doing it every single day. And that's what we want to get to when it comes to seizing the day and practicing love and bringing love and cultivating it into our day. We know we're never going to be exonerated. We're going to have zigs and zags along the way. We're going to feel like we take a couple steps forward and we backslide a bunch too. And that's all part of it. And so we want to cultivate love in that journey so we could stay the course and, and get to the point that we don't care if we ever get there or not. We're just so in love with the process. So my question to you is, what could you do to cultivate a little bit more love in the process, a little bit more love for the plateaus, and a little bit more love for the practice of building masterpiece days? That's big idea number one. Big idea number two is work 
is love made visible. Work is love made visible. Brian calls this love 8.0 um, because we spend approximately eight hours at work, right? And so work is love made visible. I just love that idea that work is love made visible. Uh, one of the things that we teach at the organization I work at is that love is the best kept secret of leadership. And that actually comes from Brian Johnson's work. It also stems from Kuznets and Posner's book on the leadership challenge. Again, the idea is the best kept secret of leadership is love. And we can use a practice that helps us cultivate love in our leadership and helps us cultivate love in our work. And that practice is this, it's just four questions that we could use every single day just to take stock and help us foster love. So the first question is, what do I love about the work that I do? What do I love about the work that I do? There has to be something, even if it's super small, what do you love about the work that you do? The second question is, what do you love about the people that you work with? Think about the coworkers, think about the people in other departments all across the organization. What do you love about the people you work with? The third question is, what do you love about the people you serve? What do you love about your clients? What do you love about your customers? What do you love about the people you serve? And the fourth question is, what do you love about the challenges that you're currently facing at work? This is a great way for us to seize the day, to cultivate love, love 8.0 at work is to ask ourselves those four questions either throughout the day, at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, to set the tone for the day, or at least at a very minimum once a week to take stock on the entire week. Think back over the last five days at work every Friday and ask yourself, what, do I, what did I love about my work this week? What did I love about the people I work with this week? What do I love about my customers and clients this week? And what do I love about the challenges I'm facing right now at work? That's a great way to cultivate love and to make your love visible in the work that you do. And that's it. The best business plan you can ever have is to love. Your customers are going to love you for it too. So the third idea that I'm going to share with you today is the idea that I started at the beginning of the video, which is to say I love you, one must first know how to say the I. To say I love you, one must first know how to say the I. And this comes from love 0.0 in the module. So the module is broken up into a couple different parts. We've got love 0.0, which is all about self-love, love, love 1.0, which is what you would normally think of love as your intimate relationships, your family, your kids, your grandparents, that kind of thing. Then we have love 2.0, which is all about um, spreading, uh, creating positive moments of resonance with other people. So it might be just extending um, love and gratitude to the cashier at the grocery store. It might be going for a walk and as you're walking, rather than being plugged into your earbuds, you actually stop and talk with the neighbor and you you compliment them or you, you share something funny or, or great and it helps kind of create that love moment. That is love 2.0. Then we have love 3.0, which is all about heroic love, which is about to encourage others to uh, take action, to inject their hearts full of courage. And that's love 3.0, heroic courage. And then we talk about love 8.0, which is the one we just talked about, which is uh, work is made, is love made visible, right? We wanna love what we do, love who we do it with, love who we do it for, and love the challenges that come with that. So the one that we're working on right now is love 0.0. And, and this one is really, really hitting me hard in the heart right now is that I think if there's a gap in, um, in, in kind of a high leverage area that's gonna help me feel more engaged and um, I guess content with my life is probably the love meter. And what I'm finding in this particular module is that where I think I'm wobbly is this idea that I'm just not as deeply connected to my soul as I could be. So I can actually love others. You can't love others if your cup's not full. And I can't be dependent on others, right? So when she says this, to say I love you, one must first know how to say the I, that means that I am totally confident in who I am by myself with the good or bad opinions of others that doesn't matter like I'm connected to myself I, I'm practicing my philosophy I'm living uh, my truth 
I'm listening to my wisdom and I'm taking action on it. So I have a strong sense of self, right? And in order for me to have great relationships with others, I have to have a strong sense of self and to be able to communicate um, boundaries, potentially those types of things. Otherwise they kind of get blurred and I get caught up in kind of codependency or inter like in um, interdependency in a non-healthy way, right? Where I'm, I'm only doing things to kind of people please or to get accolades and love from other. Well, to truly have love 0.0 is to be able to stand in your truth, to be able to walk your path. And that was a huge insight today from Brian's uh, class. And in the class today, as I was taking notes, one of the things he said was trust your own path, trust your own path. Find a sense of trust in who you are in your path, right? And I found myself even recently um, kind of getting um, bamboozled and caught up in someone else's path, right? And that's not what I'm on the planet to do. I'm on the planet to live my truth. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is by connecting to my soul, listening to my wisdom and taking action on it. And when I do that, I'm demonstrating self-love and I'm also cultivating self-trust. So my biggest opportunity is actually love 0.0. If I'm going to give more to the outer world, I need to start connecting to the inner world and develop a strong sense of self of who I am. What are my gifts? What are my strengths? What are my passions? What am I feeling called to do? And to be able to stand in that truth and not allow um, the negativity of others or the toxicity of others or the dreams of others to impact that uh, truth inside of me. That's what I'm on the planet to do. As I was looking into this, I Googled it and looked and I found an article that um, Ayn Rand actually wrote to somebody who read her book because this, this idea comes from the fountainhead. And she writes back and I think it's worth sharing. It's really something that I'm going to be working on and maybe you'll get something out of it too. So she writes back to the woman. She said, you asked me to explain the meaning of my sentence in the fountainhead. To say I love you, one must first know how to say I. The meaning of that sentence is contained in the whole of the fountainhead, and it is stated right in the speech on page 400 from which you took the sentence. The meaning of the I is an independent, self-sufficient entity that does not exist for the sake of any other person. A person who exists only for the sake of his loved one is not an independent entity, but a spiritual parasite. The love of a parasite is worth nothing. The usual and very vicious nonsense preached on the subject of love claims that love is self-sacrifice. A man's self is his spirit. If one sacrifices his spirit, who or what is left to feel the love? True love is profoundly selfish. It is the noblest meaning of the word. It is an expression of one's highest values. When a person is in love, he seeks his own happiness and not his sacrifice and not his sacrifice to the loved one. And the loved one would be a monster if she wanted or expected such a sacrifice from her loved one. Any person who wants to live for others, for one sweetheart or for the whole of mankind is a selfless non-entity. An independent I is a person who exists for his own sake. Such a person does not make any vicious pretense of self-sacrifice and does not demand it from the person he loves, which is the only way to be in love and the only form of self-respect and relationships between two people. To say I love you, one must first know how to say I. It's a powerful idea. Just the idea that true love is profoundly selfish it's the noblest meaning of the word. It is an expression of one's highest values, right? To love myself and to know my truth is to live in integrity with my virtues, to live in integrity with my core values and to live my philosophy and to cultivate that and to have trust in that and to stand in that. So that's it for today's video. There was three big ideas. We talked about the fact that we will never be exonerated. We also talked about that love, uh, work is love made visible, right? And there's four ways we can cultivate love at work. And we also talked about in order to say I, we must be, or to be able to say I love you, we must first be able to say I. And it's all about a sense of self, a deep sense of trust in the self, of to 
with your ultimate game being to be the highest expression of yourself, to be the highest version of yourself, regardless of what others say or speak about you or, or demand of you. It's truly a selfish act that is truly noble. It's a powerful idea. But that's it for today. I hope you got something valuable out of it. If you did, please leave a comment below and um, let's uh, subscribe to the channel if you want. Please share it with other people that you think might get a value out of this and I'll see you next week. Have an awesome day.